Hello and welcome back to the Solar Professor video series. I'm Steve Geiger, your Solar Professor. Um, today we have we're going to continue our NABSEP what you need to know uh, topics here. And so today uh, what I want to discuss with you is uh, Ohm's Law and uh, a portion of Ohm's Law that I call Watt's Law. And um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do uh, two things here with our learning objectives today. Um, uh, I want to, get, again, give you just an understanding of what Ohm's Law is and what Watt's Law means. Uh, a lot of people haven't heard that term before. Um, it was presented to me several years ago, and it makes sense um, to, to use the term, and I'll, I'll show you why in just a few minutes. Um, also, uh, as I've been doing in the NABSEP What You Need to Know series, um, how to use it with some uh, sample NABSEP type problems. Okay, so let's, uh, let's hit it. So, you guys may have seen this before. Uh, don't we love this? This is the traditional Ohm's Law wheel. Let's check out some of the features of the Ohm's Law wheel. Um, in the center here, we have the four areas. Uh, sometimes you see it referenced to as pi, and that's where pi comes from. So what we need to note, and what's very important for us to realize here, is we can see um, letters that may be used in some of our equations and problems. Um, there's, there's two of them, and, and what I'm about to show you uh, in just a moment, um, we'll, we'll have the definitions of what each of these are. But realize if you see P, you may also see it as W, so power in watts. Um, I is intensity, uh, it is also uh, amp, so you may see it as uh, I or A. Um, e is electromotive force, and it's the same as volts right there, so E or V may be shown in, uh, in equations or word problems. And then, of course, R is resistance. And which is measured in ohms, so you may see R or ohms, or you may see uh, a symbol, and it's the Greek letter omega, and it looks kind of like a horseshoe, some, something like that, basically. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the features of the Ohm's Law wheel. And listen, if you memorize the Ohm's Law wheel, fantastic, uh, more power to you. I got an easier way, I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Um, what it does here is, <clears throat> if you want to find P, you can use any of these three equations to do so. One of the simplest and most rudimentary equations that we have here is uh, volts times amps, or E times I equals P, right, equals the power. Um, that's, that's a basic and a staple in our industry. Really, that is um, what I call the Watts Law portion right there. Um, also, if you want to find uh, amps, you can use any of these equations. Again, to find E, you use this slice of the pie, uh, as we call it, uh, or the pizza, or whatever, or what have you. Um, and then, of course, if you need to find uh, ohms, you can use these particular equations right here. Let me introduce you to something uh, different that you may uh, have not seen before, may or may have not seen before. Anyways, um, it is called the power pyramid. And, I, you know, it's somewhat of a different approach, and I've been using it for many years in my college classes to help students prepare for um, word problems that have to do with Ohm's Law, um, and also prepare them for the NABSEP exam uh, by providing a simple way to find answers to questions in regards to uh, the NABSEP exam. And so, let's talk about the features of the um, power pyramid here. Okay, so what we have here on top here is, um, and I, we call it Watt's Law here, because it's the simplistic uh, version. The way it works is you multiply across, so volts times amps, and then that equals watts up above. Um, down in the bottom here, this is basic Ohm's Law wheel, and here's ear. Um, there was pi on the other page. Um, this one is, is showing ear. Um, so volts and then we've got amps times ohms equals volts. Th that's kind of how it works. And, and I want to uh, give you some, uh, um, uh, some samples in action, and I'm just going to write right on here in just a minute. Um, down here I have a key. It's what I just mentioned on the other page. Again, watts and power is the same thing. Volts and E for electromotive force, A and I, and then, of course, omega, and then R. 
Um, I have, when my students are taking the NAPSEP exam, what I have them do is I have them memorize this. It's pretty easy to memorize. You just draw a couple of triangles like this and then divide them into these sections. So you have watts right there, volts, amps, amps, and then ohms. Um, it makes sort of an acronym. Uh, we'll vow if you want to say that. Or WVAAO. West Virginians are always out. You can come up with your own funny terms. Trust me, some of my students have come up with, <laughs> with their own funny terms, and, they're, and they're, some of those terms are way out there that I don't want to mention on this video. Anyways, whatever it takes to memorize this power pyramid, this power pyramid will do about 95% of the um, problems that you may encounter um, as far as um, algebraic equation, equations and such on the NAPSEP exam. Uh, the only thing that it won't do that the power pyramid does, and let me back up to the power pyramid here real quick, is um, uh, these ones right here that are, um, uh, first of all, they're uh, compound problems and they are um, square roots. Excuse me. <laughs> the square root problems right here. All right. It won't do those. So, uh, Again, it does most of the problems that you're going to encounter. So let, let's look at it real quick. Let's do a simple one. Um, let's say we have something that's, um, oh, I don't know, 10 volts. Okay, here, let me, uh, let me actually write it in a different color. It'll be easier to see. Okay, let's use uh, red, All right? Let's say we have something that's 10 volts. And you can see how you can plug it right into your pyramid here. Uh, let's say it's 2 amps, okay? The way this works, 10 times 2, it's going to equal this up here. Um, and what does that equal? It's 20 watts. Okay, pretty simple to do that, right? Um, down here, amps and ohms. Let's, let's make this whole pyramid work. Um, and let, let me just grab something. Let's say we have uh, two amps again here. Um, how about five ohms? Okay, two times five here equals 10. Um, the other thing that, that you can do with this is you see this is the dividing line. So let's say in my equation I'm only given a couple of variables. Um, let's do watts here and volts. I would go 20 here and I would simply divide it. I can divide it on my calculator by 10 and then you know what the answer is going to be. It's 2 amps right there. So you can see how this works. The same thing with the bottom portion here in the Ohm's Law area. Um, 10 over here, divide that by 2. You plug it in your calculator just, just like this. 10. Um, division sign 2 and then you end up um, equaling 5 right here and then of course that is the ohms right there. Um, pretty simple to use the power pyramid, easy to uh, memorize and remember. Um, it's one of the um, four things that you must know for the NAPSEP exam. So uh, most definitely um, is a easy approach for us on that exam. Let's do some sample equations real quick and then um, we'll call it uh, a day. So here's a couple of um, sam uh, sample problems and I have two of them here. This is the first one. A light bulb uses 120 volts and 0.5 amps. If there are three light bulbs on the circuit, what is the power consumption? All right, and here's what you need to do with a problem like this. If you encounter a problem that's a word problem on an APSEP exam, and of course they're all going to be word problems, um, you want to make sure that you take your uh, pencil and you underline stuff, if you can underline. If not, you got a scratch piece of paper, uh, maybe this is number 13, um, go ahead and write on number 13, what are they looking for in this problem? Write it down or underline it or circle it if you'd like. In this particular case, it says what is the power consumption? So we're looking for power. Power um, is reflected in watts. So we know that this, the, the final answer is going to be uh, in watts. And the NABCEP exam usually has four choices, A, B, C, or D. All right? And so let's go ahead and see how to work out this particular problem. <clears throat> the other thing that I want you guys to do also is important stuff in the problem um, that are required to solve the problem uh, you need to make sure you're underlining or circling or highlighting or putting on your um, scratch paper to make sure you don't forget. Um, over here, in order to figure out watts, we need volts and amps, right? And so uh, I'm going to underline that, I'm going to underline this, 
And don't forget, in this particular case, I see it saying there are three light bulbs. That's critical. That means something's going to happen in this equation. So let's look at the answer here. Um, again, simple Watt's Law problem. We know volts times amps equals watts. So let's start plugging things into that formula. We got 120 volts right there. We got 0.5 amps. Um, and that's going to go ahead and equal 60 watts. Now, don't forget, in this particular circuit, we have three light bulbs. So we're going to multiply it by the three bulbs, and then we get the answer of 180 watts. Um, when you break it down into pieces, uh, you can, and you underline stuff, you're not going to forget. That's really the best approach to um, the math type problems on the, on the NAPSEP exam. Then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and, and kind of reality check this. You know, hey, I got 60 watt bulbs here. Um, you know, is 180 watts going to make sense as the final answer? In this case, it, it's it's pretty easy to arrive at 180. So um, some of the some of the, the the test questions that you may have on an app set, like mm -hmm, you know, but reality check the problems. Just think about it. Does this answer really make sense? Is it, is it should it be higher? Should it be lower? Is it right on the money? Okay. All right. I got one more problem for you, and then we'll be done for today. Okay, next one. Now, this one says, what is the resistance in an inverter circuit that is 240 volts? Inverter is rated to produce 600 watts. Does this have everything that we need to solve the equation? Um, I don't know. Let's see. So, when you have an inverter, in order to produce watts, you're going to need um, volts. You're going to need amps. Volts times amps equals watts. Okay. So I notice here that we are missing amps, but can we find amps is the question. Yes, we can find amps very easily using the Watts Law portion of the power pyramid. Let's do it over here. So we get watts on, uh, whoops, four, what's it throwing me? <clears throat> I was trying to draw a W, but a four came out. How about that? Um, volts and amps right here. This is our power pyramid. All I need to do is divide watts um, and volts here and then I end up getting the amps. So check it out here. We've done that here. Uh, answer says using the power pyramid this is a simple two-part Ohm's law equation. Okay, Because we are looking for resistance. It says what is the resistance? That's super important. Remember I told you to underline that stuff. All right, uh, Power pyramid We'll show you how to do a two-part equation here. Okay, uh, W V A A O, right? There we go. Um, in this particular case, we have 6,000 watts. Okay, we have 240 volts given. We do the division on there. Very simple. 25 amps right there. Okay. Now. Um, we already have the volts, but we're looking for resistance. So resistance is over here. It's ohms. Okay? And so what we need to do is just plug in the 25 there. We're going to take volts right here. We're going to simply, using the power pyramid, divide it by 25, and then we end up with the answer of 9.6 R, or, you know, you could use that little um, Greek letter symbol. My drawing is just fantastic um, on this uh, today. Isn't it? Anyways. This gives you an idea of some quick, simple, word type problems that you might see on the NAPSEP exam. Um, and hopefully I've given you some tips to, to get an understanding of how to arrive at the, uh, at the answer. And I hope you, really, you guys really like the power pyramid. I, I mean, again, I've used it for, for many years. I find it easy to use. I think my students um, really love it and value um, the ease and, uh, of its use and it's so easy to remember the, the equations as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time as we continue the four must knows for the NAPSEP exam. Thanks again.